ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if I start off, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to the Society for the Ambassador Cecil in May. And uh, this is a brief presentation on the uh, clinicians' perspectives in outbreak management. So we'll discuss basic key points uh, so that uh, clinicians can have some idea about how to deal with your outbreaks. So basically, clinicians are dealing with the rapid case detection and rapid response. So that we all elaborated on these things. That is the main key to ending this is outbreak. So for this to happen, of course, you have to have kind of efficient surveillance and laboratory system and effective coordination as well as strong controls. Then the next thing is we have to have a kind of strategic operational plan that this has to happen at the national level. So this requires national framework with strong command and control center. So sometimes you know we see that you know we have going around when something happens. So this center would be responsible for monitoring and the about on indicators and triggers of infectious diseases or outbreaks. So uh, apart from this, of course. Treating physicians, they should have some access to analysis of real time data. So, all that depends, all this work will depend on your data. But right? this is necessary for successful modeling of diseases and strategic planning. And so, so that any system should improve the access to this data and analysis, and where clinicians can assess about their work on and their about their studies. And the next thing is capacity building. Of course, we just talked about all this capacity building in the previous you know, lectures and uh, speakers. The problem here is, uh, are we going to train all staff for every possible outbreak? Can we do that? Or else, that, you know, I firmly believe that we have to impart some knowledge about outbreak management, but, uh, so we don't encourage just in case learn. Generally, so we keep, you know, our health staff trained, well trained, and they we develop the capacities for them to pick up the things quickly if something goes wrong. That is just in time to learn. So anyway, that that is something that we cannot avoid. I think we have to have good protocols of regional training capacity, regional training capacities, and we should be able to share the capacities between organizations, different countries. This is about, about the planning. This is not about the national level planning. Of course, you know, you have to have kind of planning here to detect the cases and pick up the cases and project that something is impending. So that this is systematic approach of the you know cases. And uh, this is one of the prime responsibilities of the treating physician. And uh, so family physician. Treating physician or the clinicians or the team or team and my team is the connector between the community and the local teams of medical teams. Plus, even the foreign medical teams are coming of that those other people who should be you know coordinating with these uh, groups. And uh, generally, so once you treat the patient and you send them back to the society or community, so there should be somebody to receive them from that end. And reintegrate into the micro community following this outbreak. So there should be some strong system for receiving coordinate. Of course, this is the place where we go all the time. Sometimes you know, if you're not ready with your requirements, so your projections are wrong, sometimes you might get wrong stuff. So that will be another disaster to deal with. And next thing that you have to come, you know, keep in your mind is that disasters consume whatever you have in your hand, any emergency that can impact. On any country, anywhere, or in the situation. So this curve you saw last time, and uh, what I'm trying to talk about here is that you know, uh, in new case, of course, you know, any decision might be specific cases, but if you're clever enough, of course, you should be able to pick it up at early on. So your response there will be a bit of you know time lag between the response to the you know from all important, but if you can make shift those things to the left. And so there are this light blue areas of potential cases that you can prevent. 
Lift shifting is uh, not an easy thing. It's a functional and effective surveillance system. You have a functional and effective surveillance system. So you have to have you know, good infrastructure, isolation proof, and your ventilation for control, and you have all your PPEs and all other uh, requirements. And we have to have a skilled public health workforce, of course, you know, that so that has those teams have to be here inside the hospital as well as outside the hospital. So, and we have a kind of good functional network of laboratory system, intersect of collaboration. We talked about all these things previously, and strengthen public health system and uh, public health functioning, funding, and leadership, and effective coordination. We all talked about these things. Now, some of the examples that uh, you all can employ to be your uh, you know, exercises. You know, this is uh, one of the examples I took from Al Nazar Hospital of the Arabic 2013, where they experienced Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome. One of again, coronavirus. So the physicians there yeah, they investigated in a different way and they realized that this is kind of you know nosocomial so outbreak. Right? And they initially focused on few units that where really, these cases were coming up and reviewed the medical record and created something called something like this. This is one of the devices, you know, this is not there and they not conventional with that, so, you know, but this is something that uh, they developed by themselves. And uh, with all these, you know, that you can see the uh, legend there, so that uh, so that you can see the connections between the cases, so that so that there's a timeline down there. So all, all these will help you, you know, trace the cases and find the cases and the you know uh, ways and means of you know spreading the disease. Again, SARS. This is again in India around the same India. Seven seven percent. This is not for this. They realized that some of the seventy seven percent of the cases were from hospital, and apart from out of these, all these cases, 50% of ICU, so that is how they detected it, and they were the hospital with 1,000 ICU workers. So again, uh, we all have virus case, and this is a bit of a complex one, and I'm just, you know, ask if, you know, concentrate on this blue line there, right? That is the percentage of healthcare workers affected by this digital protocol of cases. Now, if you see that, you know, first part of this particular, uh, this is, I mean, that is the occurrence of this particular outbreak. So most of the hospital cases are the cases which, you know, traveled, you know, this particular, it's a health to travel, this particular agent to the community. So from the communities, of course, you get the cases are coming up. And uh, so though you see that lesser percentage in the, you know, during the high peak, but this percentage reflects, reflects the total cases of the community. So, if we had taken the adequate actions in the first part of this uh, Ebola virus case, of course, you know, you would have prevented much cases in this out, uh, community out there. All right. So, these are the challenges of the community, you know, treating physicians with friends. They are worried about symptomatology and incubation period and modes of transmission. Generally, they talk about the virulence of the positive agent and preventive measures. And basically, scientific approach in management. Generally, the physicians, they usually they, they use their skills and knowledge, general knowledge, to you know tackle this issue. But sometimes they might trial on certain things. So that uh, so they are, we cannot say that the, that type of approach is not scientific, but if you keep it recorded. And analyze it properly, but sometimes you might find some chances in it. And uh, our surveillance process is slow, and there are there can be diagnostic delays and communication delays. So, and there can be isolation barriers, precautions are not well understood or followed by the hospital staff. And uh, so sometimes, you know, the primary support is also not clear right by the time they are dealing with this. So this is another risk, another thing that you have to consider. That's ensuring the uh, safety of healthcare workers in outbreak management. So you keep on educating, keep on educating with whatever the information that you have in your hand, and it could be about the transmission assessment, about the procedures that you are going. To, you know, sometimes you might change some of the procedures according to the scenario, and use of PPEs. And most importantly, community engagement and mobilization. So um, I think that this is something that we have to consider in this part of the world. 
dispelling the myths and misconceptions. Sometimes, you know, that uh, sometimes that they realize that due to the Goa virus case, most of the healthcare workers, they, they themselves believe that it's a kind of a curse. Right? If that happens, of course, that also contributes to, you know, the propagate the disease. These are the five pillars of outbreak management, isolation, case management, this all this stuff all you know, safe reels, continuous epidemiologic surveillance, contact tracing, and community sensitization. And this is the perspective of clinicians. So you are not a kind of a you know, bedside care provider. Right? So you, you are supposed to develop scenarios that can be extended by country or the region and shared with others, and develop people strategies to deal with you know, all these, uh, you know, communicate with your all. In internal organizations and more importantly, data analysis. So, clinicians are the frontline surveillance system and the key resource to early detection and response. So, activation of infection control functions together with the public health unit. So, I think that any, every hospital has a public health unit. And the next thing is to develop a systematic clinical strat uh, response strategies. I think we all discussed all these things. And uh, clinicians or the treating physician, they should be informed, there should be some party or some team who are dealing with all these statistics and all. They should pass the messages to the clinicians for them to understand what they are doing. Right. Uh, and uh, so that study the cause of disease so that. Uh, mapping the resources and all the all these things and these things are discussed in detail. The, my take home message is do not allow any infection to happen. That is your prime response. Okay, this is my reference. Uh, so it's a 160 page book. Uh, of course, it's worth reading. Uh, just give it. And this is available online. Uh, so I think uh, so. This this can I can my short presentation. Thank you so much.